Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Um, I am super excited today. Uh, hyped is maybe a, a better word. And we've got Jackson on the show with us. Jackson, thanks so much for joining. Yeah, no problem. I've got double audio going on. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Um, so if, yeah, if you look at the, I'll, I'll show you right on the screen. If you look at the, the video, it's got I've this. Got um, it. I had another tab. I found it. Ah, sorry. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. <laughs> Thanks All for right. having me. <laughs> okay, we're off and running. Um, so Jackson, you, uh, you're part of the Gatsby team now, which we're all super, super excited about. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you've been doing at, on, at the Gatsby, like for Gatsby? Sure. Um, so you probably know we've been working on Gatsby themes here. Um, I've uh, kind of got a background working on like design systems, kind of thinking about styling and like React applications. So I've been taking kind of the angle of, um, you know, we have a lot of different uh, possibilities with themes. So I've been focusing more on like, what does it mean to style a theme? What does it mean to like kind of customize it? And how do you build that in a way that's like very approachable and like um, also kind of works with the idea of like theme composition and some of the other things that we're planning to do. Mm -hmm. And how, like, how are we doing that? Is it, uh, can you talk a little bit about the solution you landed on? Yeah. Um, so one of the, one of the things that we'd like to enable with Gatsby themes is not only installing one theme for your site, but also allowing you to, uh, kind of like compose them together. So maybe you have a blog, um, that's rendered on some pages and then you have like another part of your site, maybe it's, um, you know, recipes section or like portfolio. We want those to be, we want it to be possible so that you can kind of mix and match those together however you want. Um, so if you if you think about what CSS does, you could kind of get part of the way there, but um, we didn't want styles colliding with uh, some of these different themes as you're like putting them together. Um, so under the hood, we're using um, a library, it's called Theme UI. Um, it's kind of an optional thing that we're using in our official themes. Um, and it's built with, uh, you can pull up the site if you want. Um, it's built with emotion under the hood so that we have kind of um, scoped styles so that they don't leak into like different parts of your page. Um, and at the at the core of this, this has like uh, kind of a theme configuration object that lets you define like design constraints. So like font sizes, color palettes, um, you know, layout properties, uh, space, stuff like that. Um, and they're kind of kind of similar to design tokens if you're familiar with that. Um, but um, we want so that. Uh, let's assume I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Um, essentially, it's like uh, if you're writing CSS, you can write color and then you put a uh, uh, hex code value in there, right? So instead of doing right. that, um, the idea is to kind of pull out, we have an official Gatsby purple color, say. So that's kind of like our purple brand design token, right? And we've got some of this going on. Flo's been working on this at Gatsby. Um, we've got that on our .org site. Um, some other places, uh, but kind of like riffs off that idea. But, um, you know, we may want to call a Gatsby, we may want to call our, you know, brand purple. We want to give a fancy like purple milkshake name or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, so like part of this, yeah, the theme specification, uh, this is a little bit drier. It's a little bit um, saying, you know, if you have colors, call them colors. If you have fonts, call them fonts. Um, so the idea there is really interoperability. Um, and that's part of the reason this is a standalone library is like, we, we want to use it in Gatsby themes, but we also want to see what other people can build on top of it. Mm. Um, and it has like applications outside of uh, what we're doing. Um, but you know, the more tools that kind of like conform to this a little bit or like follow parts of it, the more likely that, you know, you could install a component library and it just works with your themes or you need to add like a calendar widget on your site and it just kind of matches your styles all together. So that's kind of like one of the core ideas that we're going with. Cool. Um, so how would, uh, how would this, like, I guess, how do we get started? Like if we want to start looking at this and actually playing with it, what do you think the best way to do that would be? Um, did you want to, did you want to start with our official blog theme and kind of like see what the end result is like for a user or sure do you want to um, <laughs> like talk talk more through like how to use this from the get-go no i think i think this is actually good whoops let me forgot to silence notifications um 
so this is actually probably a good point. Let's uh, let's maybe make our big announcement, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> you want to do the honors? Um, yeah. I, well, uh, so we've had experimental themes in the in the works for a few months. Hopefully, some of you have checked it out, and um, there's been a lot of great stuff built with it. Um, it's it's not so experimental anymore. So today we're making themes stable. Um, if the page loads. <laughs> Let's see, this and, one is showing uh, the old version, but pretty soon these docs are going to be so up to date. Let's see if the, <laughs> um, yeah, they'll they'll be built shortly. But uh, cool. That was a little anticlimactic with the <laughs> with the docs being oh. out of date. But um, yeah, themes are stable as of today, which is super exciting. Um, and what that means is that where the, let's see, where was it? The themes, um, the original setup was to set up the themes as, well, that doesn't look right at all. Okay. We got to get the, we're wait, uh, Lannon in the, the chat just said that the, the .org site is still building. Um, but we need to. <laughs> Uh, it looks like we're going to have to wait for those to go live. So maybe let's not look at those just yet. And let's look at the actual official theme. So we can go to Gatsby theme blog and actually take a look at this because this is going to be more up to date. Um, so the thing that changed is that instead of being under experimental themes, um, themes are just plugins. Uh, and if you think about the way that themes work, they are, um, they're effectively Gatsby plugins that can use a Gatsby config. Um, that's the only major difference. And so that means that we are able to, um, we're able to basically like drop them in with any plugin definition um, and they'll just work, which is super exciting because it means that if you were already trying themes under the experimental themes header, you can now just like move that theme definition into plugins and it'll be, it'll continue to work like with no changes. Um, so to show how this works, should we just do a new one? I, I say go for it. All right, let's do it. So I set up a, um, I set up a thing here. So I'm going to make sure uh, we're going to do Gatsby new and I'm going to put it in this folder because I already created it. And we want to use the Gatsby theme blog. And oh, this one's already set up with a starter and everything. So I'm just going to grab this. I like shortcuts. So this will clone down our starter and give us the, the theme already installed. And Let's see here, once this gets built. Um, are we gonna get it on the first try? Come on, Sharp, you can do it. Come on. This is my favorite part right here. <laughs> and it's always so suspenseful too, because like I never know if I changed my my node version or something when I was working on a different project and it all broke. <laughs> hey, hey, all right, first try. So uh, now if we go over to code, we've got a uh, Gatsby config and we can see here that in the plugins array, uh, the only plugin we're using is Gatsby theme blog. And then it sets up some site metadata and that's really it. Um, and then in the source folder, we have a couple fun things going on. So we've got the Gatsby theme UI, and we've got the bio content, and then we've got a content folder, and it's using MDX. So pretty straightforward setup. I mean, what, what I like about this is that in general, when you're installing this, the only thing you're gonna have to think about is this content folder at first. So um, you're able to kind of just get in here and immediately start writing MDX and not have to think about 
Like, well, what plugins do I need? Do I have to set up Gatsby source file system? Do I need to install Sharp or, or whatever? You just get to start writing and it's it's gonna just work, which is super exciting. Um, so how do we start playing with this? Um, did you did you start up the site? I might have missed that. No, oh, let's it do running? it. Do we know what it looks like? I mean, that'd probably be helpful, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I know what the code looks like. This is the drum roll part, probably. No, I have, um, I have someone, faith. Asked, someone asked if it's called Gatsby plugin theme UI now. It is. Uh, we just renamed that. So um, if you are trying to follow along and do this on your own, um, double check and make sure that the Gatsby plugin theme UI is the new name for it. Um, but we'll get to that. OK, so we've got localhost 8000. And so I'm going to open up this one and let's pop it open. Okay. Boom. So we've got a blog. We've got a light mode and a dark mode, which is super cool. And if we click into one of these, we can use this. And so this is, uh, this is modeled after the Dan Abramov site. Um, so if you've seen overreacted, .io, um, we basically just converted his theme into a uh, Gatsby, or his blog into a Gatsby theme. And then we added some Gatsby colors, which is pretty awesome. So um, let's say we want to change this to, what's your favorite color? You and John love tomato, right? Yeah, tomato is the best CSS color keyword, so. <laughs> All right, so let's let's make our headings tomato. How how would I go about doing that? Um, okay, if you go into your source folder, um, if you're if you're familiar with how shadowing works in Gatsby themes, uh, essentially what the uh, uh, we've got Gatsby theme blog as a, a folder in there. So mm -hmm. anything inside that is actually going to be shadowing the the actual theme. And what that lets you do is override the modules in there. So if it's a component, you can kind of replace the component. Um, but theme UI actually kind of uses that same mechanism under the hood. So if you see down there, there's Gatsby theme UI directory. Okay. Um, and the package was package was just renamed to Gatsby plugin theme UI. Um, we're kind of waiting with like the experimental themes to the plugin switch. Um, so if you install the latest, it might differ. But the idea here is the colors is actually um, I don't know if you want to dig into node modules or like how you prefer to show like where that's mirroring the theme. Uh, yeah, let's uh, actually do that for sure. So it's like go into I'm in node modules now and I'm looking at um, Gatsby theme blog. Gatsby theme blog. Mm -hmm. And then we're in source. And then um, then the Gatsby plugin theme UI. This is this is also shadowing. So it's shadowing the Gatsby plugin theme UI plugin, which doesn't have any styles by default. It's just kind of there to say if you want to add your you know thematic values, your like colors, typography, you can put anything in here. So theme UI doesn't have any like default styles. If that makes sense. Um, cool. And this this what you're looking at now is the colors for the blog themes. So these are the default ones. These are the ones that are kind of based on Rebecca Purple and like the rest of the Gatsby brand. Um, and you know this is kind of the idea of smart defaults, right? If you just want to yeah. like install the blog theme and go, you can do that, and then it should look okay. It shouldn't look like you have to spend another hour styling everything, right? Yeah. So what we want to do then is if we want to change the link color it looks like the links are using primary is that correct um maybe uh can scroll down there's also a styles uh module on the left oh styles on the left i see it yeah so this this is kind of how those basic colors and typography map onto the elements that are going to be in the mdx and the markdown content um so if you go down there should be some like h1 h2s in that file um let's see uh oh maybe not no so they're not they're not styled differently yet so we could do that okay we could also just do links if you wanted to start with links yeah um and so to kind of look at this a little bit closer we have um our colors that we set in here we mm -hmm. have like text 
as a color. And then when we get into the index, where do we send our font styles? Am I missing that somewhere? I think there's a, that one right there. This is actually the blog theme also uses typography JS. Typography JS. Um, yeah, the typography JS library. So it uses the typography theme WordPress 2016, which is I think the same okay. thing that Overreacted uses. Um, and this kind of converts it into um, like that styles object that you saw, kind of takes like that configuration and says like H1 should be styled like this, et cetera. Okay, and, and so, and this is where we start to see how powerful this is because because we're using the theme UI version of typography, it's gonna pick up any object that we define here because theme UI is putting it into React context. Is that right? That's right. And can you maybe talk a little bit about how that works to, to help anybody who's not super familiar with this uh, get their head around what's going on? Yeah, sure. Um, if you if you haven't used style components or emotion uh, for like uh, styling your React app before, um, they both come with something called like a theme provider, um, and that's a React context provider. And that's kind of this this whole theme object that we're looking at right now with the styles and the colors and typography. Um, that's getting fed into Emotion's theme context. Um, that that happens in the Gatsby plugin theme UI part, um, so you don't have to like think too much about where to put that in your application. Um, mm -hmm. But that's that's it's put in context, and then when you're using Emotion, if you've used the CSS prop or if you have uh, styled components, um, you can pass in functions to pull that uh, theme object back out and use mm -hmm. values from there. So theme UI kind of adds an extra layer on that to make it a little bit more seamless, which I think we'll get into in a minute. But yeah, I think so. Um, okay, cool. So let's. Let's actually start doing something with this. So let me let me shut down all of the the internal stuff. Um, I'm gonna yeah. close this as well. Let's go back up and we'll just get out of node modules. All right, so now we're back in here. And mm -hmm. um, we're importing Lodash merge. And the reason for that is because if we didn't, we'd have to do like goofy duplicate things. Um, where we'd have to like spread the the base theme and then open the colors and then spread like base theme dot colors and that's a pain. So merge will just handle all that for us. Um, so let's play with a color. Um, I want to make whoa. I want to make this into tomato. And if I save this, it should just work, right? It should it should be used somewhere. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay, I've done something, and nothing yep. changed. But I actually, so I noticed something that I think might be a bug, um, mm -hmm. because we're shadowing Gatsby theme UI, but in node modules, we're actually using Gatsby plugin theme UI. So I don't think the shadowing's lined up right. Uh, yeah. Um, so yes. it's Gatsby plugin theme UI. And an important thing to note about component shadowing is that when you shadow a module, so it would be like if you wanted to shadow, um, let's say, what would be easy? Something right at the top. Um, this bio content, we have to shadow like source in our, our main site, and then we skip this source folder. So source, Gatsby theme blog, slash components, slash bio content and those need to match exactly um and if we don't do that then it like theme shadowing can't pick it up and it'll it'll just miss so in this case we have a folder called gatsby plugin theme ui that has this colors js in it but down in our actual source we're using gatsby theme ui so we need to rename this and i for some reason cannot um, rename. Why don't you want to be renamed? Uh, hello? My VS code has oh, like, decided to not let me rename things. So let me, let's do it through here. Um, I'm going to move source, uh, Gatsby theme blog, Gatsby theme UI to source Gatsby theme blog. Gatsby plugin theme UI. 
and then we can start that again. And let's find out. Oh, so Ward just uh, let me know in the chat that uh, the folder was locked because Gatsby Develop was using it. Do I need to do that? No. Wait, did we use that somewhere? Is this going to bite me in the ass later? No idea. What was that warning? It was about <laughs> it was it was going to auto update paths. I don't think that we use it anywhere though. Um, okay, so we have, aha, hey, it worked. Okay, so this is super cool because effectively what's happened here is um, now that we've got the path right, Gatsby is picking up this colors and it uses all of the defaults, but it just shadows this one piece, which is really, really powerful. So um, I like, I am so blown away by this just kind of in general. Uh, let's, what if I make this one tomato? Then what happens? Oops, nope, that was the wrong thing. Do that, and this. That seems Yeah, better. it's worth noting this This modes object is kind of how uh, you can define custom color modes. Uh, the blog uses two, but if you wanted to do, you know, 12 different color modes for whatever reason, you could. <laughs> Oh man, that's cool. So yeah, so I mean, effectively, you now have you have the ability to like, without having to actually write any code, you can just jump into this theme and um, like modify a couple values, and it looks like your theme. And the same thing happens with the Gatsby config, where um, if we like, if we don't change any of this, it'll um, like yeah, let's just fix this actually. So let's say Jason and Brent, or I always call you Brent, but I know you go by Jackson. I don't know why I do that. Um, and if we update these, these should even update in real time, I think. No? Does that need a restart? I don't know. Oh, no, it did. Yeah, it did update. Um, I don't know where the author goes, okay. though. And then, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually sure that must be used somewhere else. Um, but then we can get into the bio content and this one is also shadowed. So you can do, you know, stuff like this and see it live, which is super exciting. Um, and then like it, what if we want to grab a different one? So let's say I want to change this footer. How would I go about doing that? Um, that, that should be shadowable as well. Um, you know, like right now, uh, probably since you have the text editor open, the easiest way is to like look at node modules and just kind of see the, the file structure. Um, we're hoping to make this like a little bit less uh, digging around um, in the future, but um, this is a surefire way to know like the one that you have installed. Um, it's got a home footer component. Um, I think that's the one that we're looking for, right? Yeah, this looks right. Um, so I'm going to just grab this home footer component. And then if I want to update it, I'm going to do something like uh, we've got Gatsby theme blog components. So I'm going to create a new one, call it home footer. And now I don't actually want to do anything but wrap this in a box. So do, do I have to like use, rewrite the whole component or can I just? Yeah. So, um, if, if you wanted to, um, just kind of get rid of it all together, you could do like a return false here. Right. But if you're wanting to take what's existing there and just kind of change the social links, I think it had a, a social links prop to it. Um, you should be able to import the component that you're going to shadow in the shadowed one here. In the so I'm, one that you've... I'm trying the thing that you said. I'm just going to export null and see if it uh, if it drops that footer altogether. And then I want to try the other thing here. Um, 
So while we're waiting for that, can you answer a question? Uh, are there any best practices yet when it comes to shadowing components? Hmm. That's a good, that's a good question. Um, I think, I think it's, uh, <laughs> I feel like if Chris was in the chat, he might have some thoughts on that, but I think it's, uh, we're, we're still trying to figure out like good patterns for this. It's a very powerful, like API. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it. I would say like to start off with, to get familiar with it, don't, don't go overboard. Don't like do like component inception, like 20 levels deep kind of thing. I think that's mm -hmm. probably true of any sort of programming, but, um, yeah, just get a feel for it in like the simple cases where like it makes sense. I think this home footer is a great example, right? Because you want to customize the links, you might want to add, um, you know, a little image at the bottom or something, but it's not, it's not brain breaking and you're not going to hate yourself like a month from now if you like mm -hmm. look at what you did. Yeah. Yeah. And what's actually really cool here too, is that we, so we like using shadowing, um, and we'll have to talk about like what best practices are. I, I imagine there's going to be like, so there's another announcement coming at the end of the stream. So stay tuned. But, um, in the, the general sense, like we're going to have a lot of content coming out around, um, themes all of July. So, you know, keep an eye out for that. We'll be posting more blog posts. Uh, there'll be more content. Um, there's a, a bunch of good stuff about how to use themes that will all be coming out very soon. Um, but in the meantime, I have successfully deleted my footer and, that was, you know, so, all right, I've decided I just want to stub out this thing. So I return null and it goes away. But if I want to actually do something with it, you were saying I can import the, the footer just like mm -hmm. as it was. Yeah. Yeah. So you can import the footer from the theme itself. Right. So that'll give you whatever's in the, the node modules. Um, I think John wrote a blog post about this as well. Okay. So I've got this and then. I yeah. have my props, but I want to put a box around it. So I'm going to do like, um, actually, this will be a good chance to use some, some theme UI stuff. So if I want to make my box the primary color, how would I do that if I want to access theme UI? Um, should we do it with the custom pragma first? Do you think that's the, that's kind of the preferred sure. way to do it? I think. Yeah, let's do it. How would I, how would I do a uh, the custom pragma. Do you want to, should we get the footer rendering back in here first or yeah, should we? Let's, let's do that. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to wrap this in a div. Um, I'll give it its original props. And upon doing that, what we should see. Make sure we didn't make it disappear. There it's we back. go. And just to, to like customize it a little bit to show that it's working. Um, Here's our there we go. custom content. So let me delete that. Okay. So that being said, we now have the ability to actually customize our footer. We've shadowed that component. Um, how, yeah, how should we mess with this? Actually, okay, so Amberly's making a request. Um, Amberly worked on this theme. She did an awesome job, uh, laid most of the foundation for us. So she's in the chat and telling us how to use it, which is... <laughs> helpful because I don't think either of us has actually used this theme before. Um, so right now the, the social links are set up to use Twitter and GitHub for Gatsby. So let's switch those over really quickly before we get into the, the theme UI stuff and let's do social links. So uh, I'm going to change this one to be yours and let's add another one. And we'll say like website and I'll just put mine in there. And if we update those, they should, do they show up immediately? I think I have to stop and restart. Okay, so we're picking up that new config that I updated. Come on, man. And now, just through the config, we can see that like this is linked to your Twitter and the, the website showed up, it links to my site. 
Um, so we're in we're in pretty good shape here. So let's let's play with some uh, some some color values or or some kind of value out of theme UI. And yeah, you said you that, wanted to make a, a sorry, you said you wanted to make a card around it, right? Yeah, let's do that. Should let's do that. Um, yeah, so uh, theme UI has an optional JSX pragma um, that you can set at the top of a file, and it will um, kind of yeah import JSX from theme UI. Um, this is similar to what Preact does um, instead of instead of using React Create element. Um, if you're using Preact, uh, you set a custom pragma, and it uses a Preact. A create right. element function instead. Um, yeah. Emotion does this under the hood if you've used the CSS prop, and MDX also does this like internally. Um, but uh, th what this is going to do is uh, where you have the JSX syntax on line six, seven, eight. Um, instead of calling React create element under the hood, it's going to be calling JSX um, from the theme UI library. Okay, and so that, just to just to make this super clear. What we're doing is we open up like a doc block style comment with the, the double stars. Um, and, and I bring this up because like I've only used this like once or twice and it was very, very recent. So uh, I imagine that a lot of people are seeing pragmas for the first time. Um, and so basically what we're doing is once we import this, we can tell React to use whatever we want. So like if we, you know, if we had something else, um, we could set this to like, football as long as we had a football function down here somewhere. Um, and you can see that VS Code is smart enough to know like this dimmed when I changed it and it'll come back in to show that it's used when I update it again. And so that's basically what we're doing. We're saying this is the function we want to use to render JSX and we're, de we're declaring that up here. Um, but this syntax is important because if I like change this, it doesn't work anymore. I don't think. Does that work? I don't know. I'm doing it this way. I think so. Yeah, I think some compilers allow the regular comment, but you probably should use the doc block style with the double. Yeah, I mean this this makes the yeah. highlighter work. So that that's honestly that's more important to me than whether or not it works like silently. Um, and so now that we have this, we should be able to get custom styles out, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the what this is doing under the hood, it's actually going to use emotions. Uh, custom create element so that it has access to a CSS prop. And okay. there's a special theme UI prop as well, the system prop, which is SX. Um, so if we want to use, uh, if we just want to use raw, um, you know, CSS with no theme values, just kind of like do whatever, you can use a CSS prop just like you do in Emotion. But if you want to hook into this theme and this uh, Gatsby theme UI stuff that we have plugged in, then you'll want to use the um, SX prop. And, yeah, and, and for people who haven't seen Emotion before, Emotion is a uh, CSS and JS library. And it basically just allows you to do a bunch of, of CSS stuff. So um, we use it under the hood. Um, uh, yeah, there's a question. So we're, we're using Emotion under the hood. So we're using the same pragma. And does that mean that you are kind of passing through the JSX pragma or you're like wrapping it with something? Um, theme UI is wrapping what's already built into Emotion um, and it does some extra stuff to be able to pull in the theme values. And that'll, that'll hopefully make more sense when you see what we do with the uh, prop next. Okay, cool. So we've got our pragma and we are ready to rock. And you said that we can use, was it CX? SX. Uh, S SX like system styles, um, but terse. <laughs> Got it. And then I can just put anything. I yeah, want just here. to yeah to demonstrate, let's do background color. Um, and this is a an object, so it should be camel case like this. And try uh, one of the keywords from the theme, so we could try primary. Primary, yeah. It's probably gonna make the links disappear because it's I think the same it's color. Look... But, um, yep. Well. But if we did like color and then we, do we have some colors in here? I don't think we did. There, 
yeah, there's colors coming from default theme colors. So there should also be, um, uh, most of these have a text and a background color defined. Okay, so let's do text is, where was I? I'm lost. Um, background? Then what happens? I think we still have links in there. So the links are still gonna have the, let's try background color text, um, which is basically going to invert I use the word basically, I'm sorry. Use, you know, invert the colors. Uh, and if you switch between this and the light mode, um, you'll probably see, because it's coming from the theme, it's going to invert the other way. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and so this is, you know, a little, a little messy because we haven't styled this really at all other than just throwing some colors in here. But that's pretty powerful. And, you know, we can see that, like, we didn't have to rewrite all of this logic we just had to wrap it with something that had some extra styles. And like, if we wanted to pass an extra prop to this, which I don't think there are any extra props that we could pass in this particular instance, but you know, we could also just say like, you know, something like that. And this prop would be passed to footer so that we could, you know, modify things. So if you were using a button component or something, you could, you know, add the primary flag or whatever, and it would, um, and that would get passed through, which is really cool because it gives you like, you know, this also means that now you could kind of use a Gatsby theme as like a component library almost. Yeah, totally. Not even almost, um, you just I think, can. <laughs> I think that's a, I've, I've thought about this recently. I think that's a good way to think about if you're going about authoring themes, um, you know, because of the shadowing API, um, you kind of have to, you can make a theme and like, just say, this is like hard coded, this is the way I want to use it. But if you really want to like, kind of open it up for end users, if you think about the way you use, you know, define your components in your theme as like a component library that people yeah. may want to shadow, pass in custom props to or whatever, I think that's a good mindset to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and I'm really excited to see what happens too because um, I was having a conversation with um, a guy named Texas Toland about like how to make the UI more declarative and like when we start thinking about um, patterns, like right now we have all these styles that go into the views and that makes it really hard to share components because the functionality is so coupled to the styles that if you want to do a different component library, you almost have to duplicate it and like rewrap it with your own styles to make it work. And what's really exciting about this is that because of the way theme UI is built and because it's composable, there's actually a possibility that there could be a completely unstyled functionality layer for components, like kind of the way that um, Reach UI, uh, what Ryan Florence is doing over there with these like ultra bare bones components. But if they're hooked into theme UI, then you don't actually have to um, like you don't have to override a bunch of styles. You can, you can just plug in values to the theme spec and it'll just start to work. And that's, I think that's really, really powerful. I'm really excited to see what people do with that. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I would love it if, uh, you can kind of define like, here's what I want my blog to look like. And then you could install any off the shelf react component that's kind of like built with this stuff in mind. And, you know, it may not be a hundred percent there, but if it's 90% there and you just tweak one or two values, I think that's that's really cool. Yeah, I, I'm super pumped to see what people do with this. Um, so with that being said, um, I think we should do, should we do the next announcement? Uh, sure. <laughs> do you want to do it? Because I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. Um, so what we're doing to like help drive uh, themes and kind of help people get familiar with them and hopefully see what people can do about the um, like with the the component library aspect with styling with um, with like building out ready-made functionality is we're launching a theme building contest and so this is at uh, themejam.gatsbyjs.com and we've got this gorgeous illustration from Maggie Appleton um, you may know her work from uh, the egghead team and this is going to be a theme building contest. And what we mean by theme building is you are going to create a Gatsby theme. This could be a child theme of our blog. So take the, the Gatsby theme blog and uh, do a child theme that styles it. And you could do something like 
you know, change the colors, add new components, uh, mess with the, you know, extend it with additional functionality. Uh, maybe you want to add like categories or tagging or something. Um, or it could be a completely unrelated thing. You could build something brand new. Maybe you want to build a theme to show events. Maybe you want to build a theme to show um, portfolio, something like that. Um, but anything that you want to build, you can now submit to this theme. Um, what I'm really excited about with this is that for everybody who enters, we're going to give a uh, limited edition swag. So only people who enter are going to get this swag and it's going to be um, either, I think, a t-shirt or a mug. And it'll feature this, this beautiful design from Maggie. And it's, you know, we're, we're doing this once. It's, it's this contest and then no one else will get it. Um, but the most exciting thing is that we're going to pick two winners. And the, our two favorite themes, and we'll talk about the, the like, criteria here in a minute. But um, our two winners are going to get an all-expenses-paid trip to the Gatsby days and it's going to, you get to choose so that it doesn't like have to be on exact dates, but one of the next couple day, Gatsby days, the next one is coming up in London. So we will fly the winner out. We'll put them up in a hotel. They're going to hang out with the team. Um, you'll go to the Gatsby days with us. It's going to be a really good time. Uh, we really are excited for where, for what people can do with this. So definitely please go check out the theme jam website. And this is going to be, you've got a month. Basically, the, the deadline is July 31st. Um, and, and somebody in chat said, and Gatsby employees can't win. That is correct. Gatsby employees cannot win. Um, you <laughs> so let's look at the rules real quick. Um, so, you know, basic, basic stuff. Uh, you got to be 18 or older. Sorry. Uh, you don't have to buy anything. You just have to uh, submit. This is open globally. Um, we're not going to handle visas, though. So you will be responsible for getting your own visa if you're if you're selected as a winner. Um, we're going to handle up to five thousand uh, dollars to get you out to the Gatsby Days. We'll cover your flight, your hotel, your food, um, and then we are going to let's see. So deadline is July thirty first. And these are how we're going to be judging the quality. The code legibility and quality is going to be um, a big thing for us. You know, themes are a community asset. So being able to debug, to remix, to dive into the source code and understand what's going on. Um, those are like really important to us. Um, Gatsby is also completely committed to making sites accessible. So we are going to check your, your themes through an accessibility audit. Uh, Marcy Sutton and Amberly are both very like on top of things with accessibility. So, uh, they're going to be, they're going to be watching this to make sure that every theme that we ship is accessible. We're obviously Gatsby is all about performance. So we're going to check performance on themes. You need to have a live demo up and available. You can do that through Netlify or GitHub pages, whatever you want to use. Um, you got to have docs on how to use the theme. So that would really just be how to install it, what options are available, things like that. You can see what good docs look like in here. You've got installation, you've got the theme options, um, and kind of a, an example of configuration so that you can see what's available. If you're using things in site metadata, you need to set that as well. Um, you have to set accurate metadata. And that basically just means you have to update the, the package name. You have to update your author name and set the appropriate keywords. And then we just want to see what you can build. Like this is, it's going to be really fun. We're really, really excited to see what the community is able to build and, and create. So, um, please like have fun with this, build a bunch of themes, show us what you're working with. Um, we're going to be doing live streams all month with, uh, with themes. I'm actually going to do some special live streams, um, with people who are building themes for the first time. This is a great idea that Amberly had. So if you're interested in building a theme with me live, um, send me a message on, on Twitter, DM me. I'm, uh, nope, that's not Twitter. This one, uh, DM me on Twitter. I'm at Jay Langsdorf and we can set up a uh, plan to, to do some live streaming. Um, I'm only gonna have a few slots for those, so if I don't pick you, I'm very sorry, but please DM me. I would love to build a theme with you live during the month of July. So, um, that being said, do you want to build a theme and set up theme UI in it? Uh, yeah, that'd be really cool to kind of like get into the nuts and bolts of like how to author one, right? 
I just want to say I'm I'm like super pumped to see what the community does with themes. I think that's the that's like the biggest uh, most exciting thing uh, for me. I agree. I like <laughs> we've been working on this for so long and we haven't been able to really say like hey go forth and play because it's all been experimental. So getting the the docs. Oh, um, actually that reminds me. So like announcement two part one. Um, we have just released an egghead course on building themes. This egghead course is um, free, so you don't have to subscribe to get it. And you will be able to see the Gatsby theme authoring course in its entirety um, on egghead. And, you know, we're super pumped about that. It's about an hour long. It's going to take you through everything that you need to do to build a theme. Um, so we're going to go pretty fast today. So if you want a more kind of in-depth walk through the whole steps, uh, this is going to be a better resource for you. But we're going to, uh, you'll go from like actually setting up your your workspace all the way through to, um, you know, setting up data, doing uh, the, the Gatsby theme. So the stuff that we're about to do today is in here. Um, and we're also going to go through component shadowing, how to publish to NPM, um, and then how to use the themes that you've published. So go check that that course out. Give it a watch. Um, you know, share it around if if you know other people who are going to be uh, trying to build themes. And yeah, let us know what you think. We we would love to hear from you about that. So, um, what do we do first if we want to build a new theme? Do I should I just start with an empty directory? You think? Uh, I think so. You can you can set up a yarn workspace pretty quickly, right? Getting yeah. used to it. I think. Yeah. Let's find out. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's uh, let's do example theme UI, and I'm going to make two directories. We're going to have site and theme. Um, I'm going to go into site. I'm going to do Gatsby new. Uh, Gatsby. Hello. Let's see. Gatsby starter. Hello world. Just so we get the things that we want for um like we want to have the the like the develop command we want to have prettier things like that set up um and then once we have this installed i can go back out to the theme and in here i'm going to do yarn init dash y um and then i can open this That's the, nope, that was the wrong one. Um, let's close this. And we'll open this one. Okay, so we've got a, a site and a theme. And to make it a yarn workspace, I'm going to create another package.json. And this one is going to be private, which is required to do a workspace. And then I'm going to set workspaces. And the workspaces are going to be, nope, it's an array, site, and theme. So once that's set up, I can just do like a yarn install. And we'll see that it's working because we start to see the workspace aggregator show up. And upon doing that, while we're waiting for that to go, I'm going to go into our theme. And we'll edit this a little bit. We want, do I need to change anything in here? I don't think I do. I need to create an index.js so that it doesn't break on us. And then I think we can just start doing stuff. So I have my workspace aggregator. So I'm going to do yarn workspace theme add as a dev dependency Gatsby, Gats, or React, and React DOM. And that should show up hopefully pretty quick. Then I'm going to do the same thing as a peer dependency because we want to make sure that it complains when you install the theme if you don't have Gatsby React and React DOM available. And then in our site, we're going to do yarn workspace site, or actually let me make sure that that site name updated. I'm just going to change this to site so that it's an easy workspace name to type. 
and I'm going to add Gatsby theme. Wait. Um, let me update this one. In my theme, we will call this Gatsby theme theme UI example. And I'm going to copy that. Cancel, save, then I can close it. And I'm going to do this. Oh, I need to install it at star. And installing it at star basically tells Yarn to look at the, the local version. So if I go Yarn Workspaces Info, now we can see that the site is using Gatsby Theme UI Example, and Gatsby Theme UI Example is set up properly in Theme. So now we know that if we're using it, it'll, it'll actually show up. Um, so that's a Yarn Workspace in as fast as I could do it. Uh, Jackson, what do we do next? That was pretty fast. I was impressed. Um, <laughs> what, what should we, what should we make this theme do? Um, I think for the sake of time, we should probably like throw up a, a simple placeholder page and just add some, some colors to it so we can show how to set up the theme spec and then override it. Sounds good. So we create a source pages. Is that, um, how you want to create the page? Yeah, we can do that. We'll do source pages index and we can import React from React and we'll do like an export default or actually let's name that page equals, it should be index, not page. And this will be like, hello, potato. No. Hello, potato. I like that. <laughs> Um, okay. I got that from Broccolini, but I, I like that one. Export default index. Wow, I can't type it all today. And we're not going to export it as a const because we don't need to. So this gives us like a basic page. Um, now this isn't actually going to show up though when we do, because the theme isn't going to build the pages. So maybe we should set this up as a component instead and how do we, what's the right way to do this? We, yeah, I'm not sure what the, the blessed way to do this is now. You can use Gatsby plugin page creator, right? I don't know if that's needed uh, anymore. Yeah, yeah, let's see. I don't, what's the, if you want to do a component, that's fine too. No, I, okay, here's what I want to do. I want to change this. We're going to call this components and we're going to rename this to layout. And that way we can do, um, children and because uh, like what I think we can do better. is um, that way we can we can like pull the the template out and it'll be uh, it'll be like we can set the theme UI like wrappers and stuff on it um, so let's take our site and our site is just going to be Let's see, we want to get into source, pages index, and we're going to import layout from Gatsby theme. Oh, geez, what did I call this? I think it was Gatsby theme theme UI example. Yeah. <laughs> Why did I choose such a terribly long name? <laughs> um, then I can go into source components layout. And if we wanted to get really clever, we could also like export the layout from index or something. Um, I can't spell again, and then we can do something like this, right? And so now we need to set up that theme, like for real, and we're going to do that in here by going to plugins, and we'll do Gatsby theme, theme UI example. That seems good. So then we can do like yarn workspace site develop. And assuming I didn't typo anything, huh, which is a big assumption. Looks like it should, work. should Yeah, no, no immediate errors, so that's promising. All right. So if I come back out here and I go to my local host, we get hello world. And if I go into my theme, 
and I add, I can actually leave the rest of that for now. I go in here and I say, add in a heading. That's gonna show up from our theme. So our theme is installed, right? Our theme is installed and it's functional. And this is really good for development because we're running both things locally um, so that we can kind of see what's going on. So what, uh, what do we want to do if we want to get theme UI set up here? All right. So I think, I think the starting point would, let's go ahead and install um, Gatsby plugin theme UI in the theme. Okay. So I'm going to do yarn workspace. Oh man. Let me just copy this out. I really should not have named it this. And we'll add Gatsby plugin theme UI. Now I need other dependencies. Let me look these up. So yeah. it's in here. We've got cool. the Gatsby plugin. And we need theme UI, Emotion Core, and MDXJS React. So theme UI, Emotion Core. So Emotion Core makes sense to me because we're, you, like you said, we're wrapping the, the pragma. Um, what is MDX JS React doing in here? Um, so if you if you build a theme or if you build a site using MDX, using Gatsby plugin MDX, uh, theme UI um, lets you style uh, the, you know, the headers, the headings, the paragraphs, links um, with emotion without like kind of bleeding into the global CSS scope. Um, mm. So if you want to style typography, um, it kind of keeps that limited to the MDX document that you're working on and doesn't doesn't cause like weird CSS bugs to occur in other themes that might not be using that. Gotcha. So basically it's it's a convenience so that if you're using MDX, uh, theme UI will will toss everything in for you. Mm -hmm. Cool. I have installed Gatsby plugin theme UI. Do I need to include it here? Uh, yes. Okay. Or this is the site one, or is this the theme? This is the site. Yes, site. This Let's is the site. Let's go to the theme and add it. So we need a Gatsby config in our theme. Um, and a question that came in is, uh, does the theme have to go above anything else in the, the plugins array? Um, Chris Biscardi is, is answering, and so I'll just read his answer because it's probably smarter than mine. He says, the theme can go wherever you want in the plugins list. Uh, the order technically matters because the theme's plugins will expand into the slot where the theme is defined. Um, and what that means is that like, if you have uh, conflicting plugin definitions, the last one in the array will win. So like if you're like, for example, with theme UI, if we're installing two themes that have theme UI, the last plugin installed, that's the theme UI config that will be used. Correct. That's right. Okay. Um, so we have module.exports. I'm going to set up my plugins and we're going to say Gatsby theme or no plugin theme UI. And this, uh, now that that's installed, I'm going to, start up the site again and we can start doing stuff so we probably need to start with like a style object right or a, a theme ui uh -huh. object yeah so um it works on shadowing as well as like the, the api that it uses so we want to create a gatsby plugin theme ui folder in our source okay and what's the file called um, it just looks for uh, that module. So index.js will be the main point that you export. Um, if you okay. notice in the blog theme, we had stuff kind of organized into colors, typography. If you have like a really big theme object, you can kind of like organize it however you want inside of there. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, for this one, we probably will keep it pretty flat for the sake of clarity. Um, so we want like a colors object and what let's start with text and background uh so we could do text maybe black or if you have a favorite color and background and then probably you do tomato again i don't know oh yeah it's, it's gonna look really good i think um then what let's see do we need any other spots here we can set up we could set a font as well if 
we want to set like something other than and is it times. font uh, family so the, or font the, families it's fonts um for the theme so most of the most of the keys used in the theme are plural they're like listed out on the docs as well i should go look at this um we want the theme spec theming probably works yeah okay, fonts and then yeah let's look at theming so for fonts it looks like body heading and monospace are kind of the the common now are these like these are encouraged like these are the blessed keys yeah sort of like they're, they're not locked down but what we want to do with this is say the blog theme and the notes theme and the theme we're making here all define like fonts.body um hopefully you could like install another theme that kind of follows that same convention and it kind of uh, works with the other ones um mm -hmm. but really you can put anything in here that you want like it's it's pretty open like the colors you can kind of define um like deeper nested colors if you have a really complex thing with fonts if you had like you know special use cases you can add extra keys in as well cool um so do we have do i have do i have comic sans installed on my machine this is never gonna work let's try it um <laughs> and then we can fantasy is a good one yeah we'll fall back to fantasy because i'm pretty sure that i don't have comic sans um this seems like it's probably okay to start, right? So if we if we go here, then do I need to um, actually no? Let's start here and let's pull in like the the wrapper components, and then we can get into the styled object to show. Does that seem like a good idea? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So we have our layout. Our layout can do like we we have some. Uh, like structural components in theme UI. Do you want to talk about what those are and how they work? Um, should we talk about uh, the styled component? Maybe that's like a good one to start with. Yeah. Or... Do well. Okay. So what I was, that's a yeah. Because the styled component yeah, though, no, no. is going to require using the styled object. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I like I'm down that's to do whatever you want. I would say let's start with let's do the JSX pragma here again and do okay. the um, try the SX prop out so that we can see how because right now you've added the theme object and it's available in context but nothing in our layout components actually using that yet. Okay. Um, it's just kind of available. So I can do like background color, uh, and we just we just declared background. And then color, we can do, was it text? Mm -hmm. Okay, so text and background is our colors. Let's save that and head out to here and take a look. Uh, it's not picking up. <laughs> Let's see, is it not picking up because I, do I need to like stop and restart? Yeah, it might be. Um... There we go. There we go. Yeah. So, um, so basically, the the SX prop is similar to like CSS if you've used Emotion, um, but it's a it hooks into Theme UI so that we can grab the background color and the color that we've defined in this object. Um, so then, if we wanted to do something like we can add font family, and we'll say body, and that turns. <laughs> To, uh, it turns out I do have Comic Sans installed. So, <laughs> it's so terrible. Okay. Um, I love this site. Then, what do we do? What do we do next? Like, it, so what I was thinking is it would be kind of nice if we could set up, um, like the the wrapper and stuff. Oh yeah, like the layout components. Is yeah. that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, because that, yeah. that is really nice for themes, especially because then like everything's following a common structure, so it'll pick it up from the um, from the the like theme UI as opposed to having to manually override layouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Okay. I think my headphones um, might be dying on me. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got we're pulling in theme UI or JSX 
And so we need to pull in, can, can you remind me what they are? Um, yeah, so we have the root level one is called layout. Uh, maybe not the best we'll name. we have to rename uh, that. We got layout. Yeah. And uh, there's header, there's footer, um, main, and container. Um, and all these, all these are like simple style components um, that have like a little bit of Flexbox properties to kind of help you get like, you know, a very basic page layout. It's not, nothing, nothing too magical happening there. I guess we can just do like a span and say a header. And then and again, if you're, do, if you're kind of, is it main or contain main? Uh, main, yeah. Main is sort of the central central part of the page in between the header and the footer. Um, and container is like a max width centered container. Okay. Um, and, then and all these components are optional. If you want to do stuff on your own, that's also whoa. totally fine. Footer. Footer. <laughs> okay. So upon doing that, what we end up with is pretty slick looking like full width container um and there are a couple things that like we're not addressing yet like this uh this whole deal with the the margin so like to fix that we would want to do something like what is it import global from emotion core and we can do global styles and we'll just say um, body is it margin zero. Does that do it? Well, what did I break? Oh, it's like header HTML and body. I think you're missing the uh, closing tag. Actually, um, you know, like a lot of people oh, do just CSS resets. Is what it is. Um, you should need it on the HTML, to be honest. Um, someone might correct You are me. I correct. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, we could throw like an actual uh, CSS reset in here, but let's not worry about it, I think. We're, we're basically just saying like we, we don't want that extra margin around the body so that our theme styles, like the layout takes the whole thing. Um, then if we want to... Like, let's take the header and let's make it, um, let's like invert it. And to do that. Sounds good. What do we do? Like, I assume we go back in here. Um, yeah, you should be able to add like a, uh, a styles object um, to this. Okay. Um, and this is, this is like the main mechanism that you would use to uh, style the MDX content, um, but the layout components also have special keys in here. So um, if you give it a key for a header. And that's just like capital uh, header, capitalized. like the name of the component. Yeah. Um, and then you can put any um, sort of that system style CSS in here. Um, if you want to do background color. color. Um, Shorthand properties yeah. are not working is the um the main takeaway there and then we'll set the color to background and upon doing that hey hey there we go and if we wanted to add something that's not custom like if i want to set some padding on this i could set it to like 10 pixels and then it it'll do that for us um so that's pretty slick what if i want to style all of my h1s so for example in my layout I have this H1. Can I do mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Um, the same the same kind of setup it uses for MDX. There's a, a styled component, um, which can also hook into the stuff. So if we add uh, under header, if you wanted to add an H1 style. Under header, I'm going to add an H1 style. OK. Yeah. And we'll say, yeah. I guess, let's. I don't know, something easy. Let's do a uh, heading and we'll make it sans serif. So it's easy to see. And we'll say that the font family is heading. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now if I go back out, nothing's happened. So how do I get that to apply? 
right? So by default, it's not going to put anything in the global CSS, right? Um, so what we do, if we go back to the layout, is that where you had the H1? Yep, right here. Uh, yeah, let's import styled, capital styled from uh, theme UI. Um, and this is a, a special component that has uh, keys for all the HTML elements that it supports. Um, so you can do styled.h1 for the component. Okay. And so this is basically saying, like, we want an H1, but we want the H1 that's listening to theme UI. Yeah. So it's opt-in um, as opposed to being, like, magic global. Right, right. And I think it's also worth noting, um, you know, if you want to use the styles, there you go. If you want to use the styles for an H1, but you want to make sure that your markup is semantically correct, um, there's also an as prop, um, which style components and emotion both have now. Does um, it not? And that can... It is like an H1 H by default, right? But if I wanted to make it something else, like I could say, um, could I just set that as like a paragraph? Yeah, an example could be you want like an H1 that's styled differently. You should only have one H1 per page, right? So um, it kind of gives you that um, uh, override yeah. mechanism if you need okay. it. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So that's, that's pretty powerful stuff. Um, and obviously, like because we switched it to a paragraph tag, it picked up browser defaults. Um, so that's like you, if you were going to do that, you'd need to set the sizes and, and everything in this H1 for the, the as to not end up with different setups. Um, right. Cool. So, I mean, this like this is feeling pretty awesome. Um, now, if we wanted to, let's say. Let's see, what do we have time for? We've got like 18 minutes before we need to call this. So do, is there anything that we haven't dug into with theme UI that, that you think we should highlight here? Um, also, if anybody who's watching has questions, now would be the time to post them so that we can get those answered before we wrap. Um, yeah, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think um, because we have this beautiful like Comic Sans tomato theme it might be worthwhile to show like i've installed your theme in my site like how do i change the tomato to salmon or another color yes that is, is that, a great idea yeah so we have our site our site has a page and that page imports the layout from our theme um we want to override it to be salmon which is also a good color how would we go about doing that? Um, so we did this, I think, with the blog theme, but we'll we'll make a folder in our site source called. Um, Gatsby. I think theme, we can just whatever. I think we is. can shadow Gatsby plugin theme UI, right? Do we do we shadow Gatsby plugin theme UI? Is that right? No, that yeah, that's right, that's right. So we do Gatsby plugin theme UI, and index. And then I'm going to import, or I'm going to install uh, Yarn Workspace site add lodash dot merge. And we'll get this started again. And then here I can import merge from lodash dot merge and import base theme from Gatsby theme UI example, uh, source index. I guess I don't need to do that, do I? Um, and so that gives us like our base theme. And then I can do export default uh, merge. We'll start with an empty object, add the base theme. And now we have our object for overrides. And if I want to do colors, I would do what colors? Was it background that was? Let me look at this. Yeah. Background was. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said salmon? That's a, that's a decent one. It's not as good as tomato, but it's pretty good. Did that change? Maybe should do something more extreme. I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, geez, that's too much. Light blue. <laughs> Okay, that's a little better. Um, so yeah, now now we are 
basically um, we are shadowing just one color out of our base theme. So I have a request for cornflower. I think that's that's probably the right idea, actually. Did that even work? Is that a color? Is it cornflower blue? I don't know. I don't know this don't one. Remember. There it is. Um, yeah, cool. Cornflower blue. <sighs> All right. So we have shadowed it. We have um, we've looked at different overrides. Um, the question, let's let me look through the questions to make sure there's nothing that we missed. Um, what are the benefits of the theme UI structural components like header, footer, and main? Do you want to take that? Yeah, I think someone, I think uh, Vince Free, Vince B kind of like hit on it. Um, part of it's like, you know, this is some of the page layout like stuff that you'll end up doing a lot of times. Um, mm -hmm. Tries not to do too much, but kind of does the stuff that like hopefully is like useful. Um, and the other thing is like, we saw how you could uh, theme the header uh, mm -hmm. like in the styles object. Um, so if you if you build a Gatsby theme using these layout components, um, maybe you don't want to have like the inverted header, but that also opens up your um, theme for that level of customization if you want to like support it. So mm -hmm. if you if you looked at the it, it, this doesn't work now, but if you looked at something like the blog theme, um, and it doesn't change the header background color, but potentially you could have like a configuration where it would change that. Nice. So, does that make sense? I mean, it makes sense to me. I uh, please add an uh, add a follow up if we if we didn't answer that question. Um, then let's see. I think there was somebody asked for an example of how I'm using merge. Um, so the way that that Lodash merge works is it's basically it takes um, an initial object and then additional objects. And so if you were to do something like um, merge here and then you had like uh, blue cornflower true and then like that would give you um, like you've got this object and that would get merged into this one so your final object would be cornflower true or uh, blue cornflower true and if we added another object into this where we said like blue um, I don't know, let's call it Royal and we'll say true. Then what would end up happening here? If you like merge these, the, the normal way, um, you would end up with, wow, I made this really hard to read all of a sudden, didn't I? Let me just save that. Yeah, that's much better. So here you've got like the Royal blue and the cornflower blue. And when you merge these objects, this one in like a traditional merge would override this one and just eliminate it entirely. But using Lodash merge, it does a deep merge. And so the, the resulting object ends up being um, both. So it would the, the final object would be this here. Um, so that's, that's what merge is and, and why it's helpful. If we weren't going to do it that way, what we'd end up having to do is um, this really kind of junky, let me get rid of this. Uh, if we weren't going to do it like this, the way we would have to do this is, is export default and then we would do like base theme and then, oops, base theme. And then we would do colors. And then in colors, we'd have to export base theme dot colors and then override the color. Um, so this is, this is like, this works. If you don't want to have the merge dependency, you can absolutely do this. But it's kind of verbose versus being able to just say, these are, these are the things I want to override and I want to keep everything else from here. Um, let's see, anything else that we need to answer? Uh, will these files be available after the stream? Absolutely they will. I will, um, I will be putting this up on GitHub. Uh, the, the stream today will be uploaded to YouTube and we will, um, we'll do all of that. There's also, if you want to see a, a slightly more full featured example, um, I did a Gatsby theme, um, jam example. Gatsby theme jam example has a like a fully functional submission example um, and, and like instructions on how to set it up. So 
we can drop that in there. Um, then let's see how to publish your theme. So publishing a theme um, is going to be covered in the egghead course. If you, if you want to look at that, uh, it's also just, you have to set in your package for your theme. Um, you need to set a name, a version, and then you can just run NPM publish. And it, you'll have to make sure that you're logged into NPM for that to work. But once it's done, um, the theme will become available up on like npmjs.org. And I did package, oops, uh, like jam example has been published. Um, and so you can kind of take a look at the way that that, that works if you want to give that a try. Um, let's see. Uh, anything on the horizon for custom themable components via styles? Jackson, I'll let you take that one. Uh, yes, there's there's an issue open. Uh, may not be super clear, um, but happy to follow up on that. Like um, the layout components are kind of like a basic example, but you should be able to kind of like set some of that stuff up for your own themes if you wanted to. Cool. Um, let's see anything else that happened in here. Any preferred naming convention for child themes? Um, I mean, the, the major thing that you've got to keep in mind is I would prefix everything with Gatsby theme. If you are going to say, make a child theme of the, the blog, I would call it Gatsby theme blog dash whatever, um, whatever you want to style it just to kind of make it a little more obvious. Um, Ultimately, it's it kind of doesn't matter. The main thing that's important, you have to include Gatsby in the theme name, or it's you're like we have some stuff that happens where we'll compile um, the code, like we'll transpile, so you don't have to set up Babel and do a build and all that. Um, if you don't include Gatsby in the name, that's not going to work. So just and it's also just kind of harder to spot like what's a theme and what's not. So I would prefix everything with Gatsby theme. If you're uh, a child theme of something else then you can just um, call it like Gatsby theme, the original theme dash the, the remix name. Um, let's see what else. It's, uh, I think we're getting to the end here. Um, we have to publish to enter the theme jam. Absolutely, yes. You, you got to uh, publish your, your theme for it to be a, um, a valid submission. The, the rules are there. There's also, if you look at this, um, the submission example, I put together a submission checklist. So just run through this, make sure you've checked all these boxes. And if you have any questions, uh, please give us feedback, like open issues against this example repo. If you get stuck or have questions or, or have things that you want us to fix, because we want this to be really accessible and, and easy. Um, we want people to get involved. So if you get blocked, let us know and let us know and we'll do our best to unblock you. Um, let's see the uh, yeah, somebody asked about the announcement. So just to recap before we wrap up here, um, Gatsby themes went stable as of uh, yesterday, but officially as of today. So you can now use Gatsby themes. They are stable. They're documented. Everything is is running the way that we want it to be. Um, we also opened up a contest to celebrate the, the launch of themes. It's at themejam.gatsbyjs.org. We would love to have you create a theme. Um, the Everybody who enters is going to get Gatsby swag, uh, some limited edition theme jam stuff, and every and two winners are going to get selected for an all expenses paid trip to Gatsby Days. Uh, the next one's coming up in London, so it's really really fun. We're really excited, and let's see what else. I think we are, we're all set, y'all. I think like this was so much fun. Um, we're going to be doing streams all month. Keep an eye on Twitter. Make sure that you, uh, head over to twitch.tv slash Jay Langsdorf. And, uh, what, what do the kids say? Smash that follow button to get notified when we go live. Um, so that you can see everything that we're building. And like I said, if you want to build a theme, um, if you've never done it before, please get in touch with me. Send me a DM on Twitter. Uh, Jackson, where should people get in touch with you if they want to follow what you're working on or, or kind of see what's going on. Twitter is, Twitter is always okay. My DMs are open. Um, also, if you want to jump into a GitHub issue uh, on any of the relevant stuff, feel free to do that. I'm checking that pretty frequently. Um, so yeah, system UI is kind of the parent repo, but in here there's theme UI and is there Gatsby or is it all in here? 
It's all in there. Yeah. So the Gatsby plugin. Uh, we'd like to build some more tooling and packages around this too. So if you're kind of interested in this general idea, feel free to kind of jump in there. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, Jackson, I think this is this is a good place to break. Any any parting words? No, I'm I'm super pumped to see what the community builds like on top of Gatsby themes and like see like what comes out of this uh, theme jam contest. So I just want to say like good luck to everyone and like reach out. Um, and also thanks, Jason. This was like pretty fun to do. I've never done a live stream before. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for coming on. It was it was a blast. I absolutely love this this new whole setup with themes and the theme UI stuff is is so powerful. So I'm really really happy to see all this stuff going live and, and to start see people using it. Um, thanks everyone for coming out. We will see you soon. Uh, keep an eye on Twitter and your email for, un for announcements of what's next. Uh, Jackson, thanks. And we'll see y'all next time. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>